Hey everybody, Jen here. Welcome to the channel. I hope you all are doing well today. I was looking for a new adventure, so I thought, hey, why don't I give uh, the Honda 300 a try? So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go take the Honda 300L for a ride and let you know what I think about it. So join me. I wonder if I can mount this thing. <laughs> it's got a uh, almost a 35 inch seat height. It's like 34 and a half. So with my 30 inch inseam, it is a little bit intimidating. So let's uh, let's give this a shot, shall we? <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to use some peg action here. There we go. Oh, hey, how about that? I can actually reach the ground. I mean, I'm not flat footing it by any means, but uh, but I can reach the ground. So that means this bike has some pretty squishy suspension. Well, I am uh, happily surprised about that. All right, let's fire her up. All righty, sounding solid, feeling good. And you know what? I lied. I can I can flat foot the ground on this bike, which uh, which is crazy. I didn't think I could do that. I'm excited to go give this a shot. All right, she feels pretty good to stand up on. I'm not squinched down at all. It's a nice height for me. I'm uh, I'm five foot eight, so if you are you know near five foot eight, I can tell you the spike feels pretty good <laughs> all right some early impressions um, the seat feels stiff it feels hard um, I, I'm not uncomfortable uh, I we're gonna ride for an hour and a half two hours today on both the asphalt and the dirt so I will let you know if I become uncomfortable at any point I can tell for sure that I am higher up off the ground it's just it's just very noticeable um, but the bike feels light and nimble and it feels like it has plenty of power and overall I'm pretty excited to go give this thing a shot today oh yay I can see what gear I'm in if you've watched any of my other videos you know that I, I really do like that feature I normally ride a uh, brand new well at 2022 it's, it's brand new as of about a year ago uh, Royal Enfield Himalayan um, I can tell you right now that this bike feels more powerful than the Himalayan despite the fact that it, it has it, a, a smaller engine it is a lighter bike a much lighter bike the Himalayan is about 430 pounds this bike comes in at just over 300 pounds so I can definitely tell that it definitely has more get up and go than the Himalayan but comfort wise folks Himalayan's got you beat Honda noticing that this bike is very high geared i'm in fifth gear already it does have six driving gears um but i am in fifth gear right now going 40 and i feel like i need to be in fifth gear going 40. so that's that's different than my himalayan um going 40 in my himalayan I, I definitely wouldn't be over fourth gear and possibly could even be down into third gear so that's an observation um, i'm also noticing the uh the shift lever and the rear brake are further further away than I'm used to, for, like further distance from the foot peg, uh, which I'm actually appreciating today because I'm wearing my motocross boots and they are bigger, they're more bulky, and so any bike that has a shift lever that's closer to the foot peg, it can be kind of difficult. So I'm liking that. So I mentioned that I normally ride a Royal Enfield Himalayan I have also have quite a bit of experience on a Yamaha XT250, Yamaha TW200, and a little bit of experience on what D-Rock's riding up there, the uh, KLR650. So I'm going to do um, a bit of a comparison, I guess, today. So right off the bat, I can tell you the bike that I would compare this, this bike to very closely would be the Yamaha XT250. It seems to have about the same amount of power when I'm when I'm hitting the throttle here. Uh, Comfort-wise, it's definitely not in the same ballpark as the KLR or the Himalayan, but I think that it's going to, um, in the end, be more comfortable than the XT250. I feel like by now, I mean, we're only 10, 15 minutes into this ride today, 
but already I would be experiencing some discomfort if I was on the XT250. So uh, this bike, despite you know the seat, I can feel that it's not spongy. It honestly feels it's it's pretty hard. Um, but for some reason, I mean, it's not really it's not really causing me any discomfort. So um, like I said earlier, I'll let you know if that changes. But right off the bat, I'm definitely going to have to compare this bike more closely to the XT250. All right, another observation is we have a crosswind today. The wind is gusting. It's not super bad, but I'm going to say we're probably getting gusts of 10 to 15 miles an hour right now, and I can feel that a lot. That is due to the high center of gravity on this bike as well as how light the bike is. I'm sure that Dave up there on the KLR is not experiencing the same thing as me right now. I'm very grateful that he finally installed a windshield on this bike because I'll bet that has made it a lot more comfortable for him. But I can definitely feel that wind pushing me around. This is not a bike that I would um, choose to be on the interstate with because of that fact. I'm sure that you know semis and larger vehicles passing would feel quite uncomfortable compared to a heavier bike like the KLR or the Himalayan. But I am really excited to see how this bike shines off-road because I think that that is where it's gonna shine. So I gotta tell you, the reason I decided to take this bike out today is because Dave inspired me with his recent, um, with his recent video that he did out in the Three Corners area where he dropped this bike probably 20 times, maybe more. Um, just in sandy, crappy terrain with steep hills and whatnot. And this bike powered through that. It got up every time, didn't have a problem starting, didn't flood, no, I mean, no problems at all. So this is definitely an impressive bike. He really put it through the test that day. I think he called that, that video the most grueling ride yet. You need to check that video out. It is really impressive. Yes, I can definitely tell I'm on a lighter, more nimble bike. Um, it's the same feeling I get on that XT250. It just, it feels like it's playtime, honestly. It just, uh, I mean, for a beginner rider, it might be a little bit unnerving because as soon as you get on the dirt on a lighter bike, it doesn't feel as stable as a heavy bike like the KLR or the Himalayan. But once you kind of get over that, you realize how nimble the bike is and it makes you it emboldens you and makes you want to do a little bit more crazy things <laughs> so that feeling is present on the honda all right here's a negative i do not feel comfortable shifting standing up on this bike um between the uh, position of the shift lever in relation to the foot peg and my motocross boots I, I can't really, I can't do it. Um, I'm having to take weight off the foot peg in order to do it and that makes the left side of the bike all of a sudden lighter and uh, then the bike wants to turn that way and then that's just a whole combination of no good. So I don't love that, but that may not be the case for you, somebody with bigger feet. Although for a girl, I do have quite large feet. My, motocross boots here are men's and I believe they are a size 11 so yeah she's got plenty of power climbing up these hills she corners good in the dirt pretty comfortable bike off-road I knew this is where she would shine all right as I wind my way up to the pass here I think I have come up with a nickname for the Honda CRF 300 L that being nimble power <laughs> she's nimble and she's powerful it's fitting it is fitting i've reached that phase in my ride where i have gotten comfortable enough with the bike that i am just having a hoot of a time i have figured her out well enough that i feel comfortable and i'm just cruising along here on nimble power <laughs> we're making our way up to the pass we're gonna see if there's gonna be any snow on the road um, I don't think there will be, but but we will see. There is there is snow right there, so it uh, it could happen. The road's looking like it's getting a little bit more damp. Are we gonna have some snow up ahead, or maybe some mud? <laughs> we will see. We will see. It looks. I think we've got like a descent right down here, and then we go up to the pass. So so far so good, though. 
roads have dried out pretty good we don't have any moisture in the forecast so honestly i gotta say it it's kind of nice we've had so much snow and rain lately i've been really missing riding so it's nice to have a little bit of a a dry spell right now i keep i keep missing the shift lever and shifting into neutral when i go from first to second i'm having a hard time getting used to where that shift lever is <laughs> so. Well, if a car is out here, we probably don't have snow up on the pass. So one thing I'm noticing standing up on this bike as I'm going around corners and avoiding little obstacles is that I think this is the most nimble bike I've been on, even more so than the XT250. I'm trying to wrap my head around why that might be, and I'm thinking it might be because it's, it is, you are higher off the ground, and so with a smaller amount of motion, you move more than you would if you're lower off the ground. So that's what I'm going with anyways, but that's what it feels like really. I really I really feel like this bike is very, very nimble. This road is a little dicey and honestly, this is not real comfortable for me. Um, the brake lever, I'm having to take my foot off the put, foot peg to hit the rear brake, which feels weird. It's just because my boots, these motocross boots are not flexible at all. So I can't just like leave my heel on the foot peg and put my toe on the brake lever. So that is a bit uncomfortable. Um, but the bike is staying upright easily. It feels good. And I am still enjoying the heck out of this ride. Woohoo! Go Honda go, alrighty. Plenty of power, very nice. No snow. No snow up here. Not surprising, really. All right, going up and down these uh, past few little hills have been no problem at all. They've gotten pretty steep, uh, loose on the descents a little bit, and the bike has felt real comfortable. Granted, I, I mean, I'm riding this bike for the first time, so I am taking it easy, um, just kind of you know warming up to it so not pushing it real hard but needless to say i haven't had any problems with the bike slipping out or anything like that so feels real comfortable real good plenty of power all right i believe this is the last climb up to the official pass before it's all downhill from here so so yeah Climbing on the Honda. Very solid, very capable, feeling good. And that's it, the pass official. All right, headed down the pass now. It, it does get a little bit steep, so we're gonna see how we feel about these rear brakes. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Oftentimes coming down stuff like this, I'd be in first gear on the Himalayan to keep her going slow, but this bike is so high geared, I'd be, I don't even, I wouldn't be moving if I was in first gear. So we're taking her in second gear, feather in the rear brake. We'll just chill down this thing. <clears throat> this is not going to be a performance uh, review of this bike really, because um, I'm not pushing it today. I'm getting used to it, just giving you first impressions. If you want a performance ride, once again, check out that video that Dave did about a month ago. Um, most grueling ride yet. That will show you what this bike is capable of and what it can get through and keep right on going. Yeah, I thought there was some bigger, looser, more interesting terrain on this road. Here it is. <laughs> Got good tires on this bike though, so not worried about anything there. Bike's feeling good too. Not slipping out, really digging into these rocks. Gripping the corners just fine. Rear brakes are shining, doing great.
here right here is a bit of an interesting section it's quite steep the camera never <laughs> picks up when a road's steep but i can tell you that this is quite steep so but the honda seems to be handling it fine the brakes are working great so all in all life is good all right here's the test i guess if i can pick up the klr in the himalayan this ought to be a breeze seeing as how it's so uh, i don't know 130 pounds lighter <laughs> so i think if i was in drock's position on that video that he recorded about a month ago the uh, the one i've referenced a couple of times I think I would have just sat on the bike. I mean, this is like the perfect height to just sit here, chill. I would have chilled out here for like an hour contemplating my predicament. <laughs> A couple other things I didn't mention is uh, D-Rock still has the stock foot pegs on this bike and they are quite narrow. I think if I were him I would probably switch those out for the same ones he's put on the XT. They're um, wider and a lot more comfortable. That being said it was not uncomfortable standing up on the bike but I did mention that in my motocross boots which are non-flexible at all I was unable to shift standing up and this is the uh, first bike out of the bikes in our garage where I have not been able to shift standing up. So that was, you know, slightly annoying having to sit down every time I had to shift. Um, going downhill in this bike, I think this might, I mean, I guess this bike and the XT are both very comfortable uh, maneuvering in loose terrain downhill. Back brakes on both bikes work really well. And I just think that the lighter feeling of the bike really lends to the comfort of going downhill. Sometimes when we're taking the bigger bikes downhill, um, they can really feel like they're they're just pushing themselves downhill and you're really having to ride the, the rear brake harder than you'd like, whatnot. But these, these lighter bikes, um, gosh, this bike I was able to keep in second or even third gear going down steep terrain. Um, and it, it felt perfectly fine. So, so that was cool. I've already mentioned that this bike is extremely comfortable. I think if I was um, going to go long distance, I mean cross country and staying mainly on back roads, this would be my bike of choice. Very comfortable, very capable off-road. So I don't know that I can really think of too much else. Um, stability, I felt pretty stable on the bike. Um, but it is a higher off the ground bike and being that it's light, you do you have to drive the bike. The bike doesn't drive itself. The heavier bikes seem to feel like like they kind of drive themselves and you're you can be a little bit more of a, a passive rider on the heavier bikes, I feel like. Maybe that's bad wording, but uh, but that's what I feel like. Um, these lighter bikes you you have to drive them, you've got to tell them where to go. So um, I think that uh, I think that that is enough said. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please consider consider doing so. It helps us out a ton. We have also recently launched our um, touring business. We will take you out for a ride with us for a small fee. So if you're interested in that, please visit us at precipiceofgrind.com. There's more information there. Stay safe out there. We'll see you next time. Jen out. <laughs>